Hey everybody, it's Chef Carrie from Bardo in Denver. <laughs> I'm also on season 15 at Top Chef Colorado. <laughs> and you're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Oh my gosh, that laugh just gets me every single time. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, we're in studio. And then uh, by phone right now, we couldn't pass up the chance. Keegan Gerhardt back with us. Uh, Keegan, we're going to bring her on the line right now. What do you think? Sweet, please do. Yeah, let's do it. Without further ado, in the kitchen at Bardo, it's Chef Carrie Baird. She uh, survived another week. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chef Keegan. Chef Carrie, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Doing well. I'm doing great. Although I'm playing hooky and you're working, so I feel bad. <laughs> I just dipped to the back, and everybody wonders why I'm on the phone. <laughs> you dipped out. They're not used to it by now. After six weeks, Carrie, that you come and do a little cameo on the show. They're pretty used to it, but I think the chef's counter is like, why is the chef on the phone? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, season fifteen. It's Top Chef. It airs at eight p.m. on the Bravo Network. Uh, 8 p.m. here locally in Denver, but we're you know we're just such huge fans, and you're doing such a great job. But there he goes, your colleague and and uh, Coloradan brother Luck. And I think yeah. I called it, you yeah, man. I, he he left Italy. I said, who's going to leave for Italy? It's just a coincidence. I said he either won the thing because he's got a stack of cash now. He can go to Italy, or he's off the show. I said that to him last week, and he says it's going to be a fun week. Well, I don't know how fun getting booted off is. But at first blush, Carrie, what are your thoughts on Brother's exit? You know, it was a shock to all of us, for sure. Like, he was such a presence and, you know, so strong. Like, we were all very shocked. But, you know, he handled it gracefully. And, you know, he totally is kicking ass in Last Chance Kitchen. So, not the last of them. Well, did you watch, uh, it, Keegan, did you watch The Last Chance Kitchen? This, this no, last... I haven't yet. Okay. I, I haven't. There's a little drama in that. So, too. Um, was in there battling it out with Brother Luck, and there was something about the cellophane wrap, and there was, I guess, some talk that Brother maybe hid it from him or it, put it aside or it wasn't there. But Two wasn't he happy at all not. upon the exit, and he <laughs> called him out. He was like, hey, listen, I, I have no respect for Brother because of oh, that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. I mean, there's... Bro brother didn't hide it. I think there was a little... You know, like he had it, but he didn't hide it. So I don't know. Like who would do? But a couple of weeks ago, and I can't remember. I think it was in person that we were talking. I said, uh, Carrie, you, you know, you've kind of got to cook to your to, to your crowd or your the, who's judging. And there you go. You have Keegan there, which is terrifying all in itself to have him pick <laughs> apart your dish. But um, brother decided to just kind of go AWOL and do his own thing and r really not cook the German cuisine that he was tasked with. You know, that's exactly what he did. He, his, his egg roll was delicious. I ate one. We, our, our yeah. students were next to each other. They were great, but he just didn't play the challenge. Yeah. So are you mad at Keegan? Because I think Keegan had a huge part in his exit. <laughs> Am I mad? No, I mean, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. That's, a, that, that's our gal right there. Uh, no, you really have survived. And before the break, I, 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 you didn't have an opportunity to listen because you're working. Um, but Keegan, you know, you, you basically said um, being in the middle. Is and kind of floating the way I don't floating I guess I don't know that's the God, just that I, flying under the radar yeah. until uh, until yeah. it makes sense to 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 drop the hammer on somebody. Have you been holding yeah. back, Carrie? Have you been holding back? Um, I don't know if I've been holding back. I just I I feel like none of the challenges have really and this sounds silly, but not played to my strengths so far. You know, like I really pride myself on being kind of strange pairings and pretty creative and you know just like cooking like elevated german food was was pretty challenging for me um so you know obviously you're gonna have to wait and see but you know like I, they start the challenges change a little here in the future <laughs> yeah Jerry, uh, I, I'm keegan sure take it over saying. here man keegan i want you to i, just had, a quick, I had a quick question because we they don't really let us hang out together on the episode they keep the judges and the contestants <laughs> quite separate but um i was just curious to know from your opinion you know for the season in terms of stress and challenge, how that episode ranked versus the season for you? How it, like the, I'm like, sorry, say that last part again? As for the stress and the challenge itself, was it one of the harder ones? Was it pretty average? Was it an easier oh. one? Like The German one was hard. I mean, not only was it way out of my comfort zone as far as the food that is Carrie's food, but there were two pieces to it. You had to do the Rattler. 
And, you know, like, that was hard. And I didn't necessarily pair my Rattler with my entree. I just, I set out to make a really fun Rattler and a really fun dish. Um, You know, but some people kind of paired them. And, you know, Tanya did, and she did really well. So it was a hard one for me. I was definitely stretched in this one. Keep it rolling, Keegan. Yeah, they made it seem like it was hard for everyone. Yeah, (laughs) and I I I think it was. Probably was. Everybody either fell into the category of of that, if not good food, good rattler, good food, good rattler, uh, good bad. What was the other option? Good rad, uh, yeah. good food, bad rattler. Right? There was like three three things. So, I yeah. I'll say this: I don't know. I don't know the rules after the fact of something airing, <clears throat> but uh, but the the bottom three it was really between the fish dish and brother luck. It was really what Graham said. It was between somebody that didn't give us German. And, and then someone that once again gives us under season food. And I really felt like we had gone to the table ready to send her home, even though she's such a strong cook, um, because she just continues to under season. And then when we got there, uh, Padma was such a fan of the flavor of the spring roll that it got confusing. And we ended up, it was really, in my opinion anyway, it was decided right there at the judges' table for it to be brother. So Yeah. It was, uh, I'm sure it was, it was a hard and, you know, and uh, who I was surprised, who I was really worried about, who really brought a lot to the table was Mustache Joe because he was really ambitious <laughs> in what he did, and I was worried he wouldn't get finished, but he did. And, Remember uh, so, that but, spritz of beet? He like spritzed his rattler with the little like hairspray thing. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, yeah, this he, like, guy has got so it. much talent <laughs> and so much tricks up his sleeve and you know i was thinking man that that guy we would be hard pressed to do that as a craft cocktail at d-bar right now you know oh my gosh the things that you said to joe sasso at uh at the um judges table were so brilliant and you know we talked about it for weeks after that night and how you met joe one day and you saw right through him and you know you said you've got this bag of tricks but you just don't know what to do with it and he was just like floored by your feedback it was awesome Wow. Well, I hope he took it positively because I do think he's immensely talented. And I think, you know, we've all been there. I might still be there. Hell, I'm in my 50s now. I don't, I don't know if I have my own style yet. But, you know, at some point, you have to stop looking out. You have to start looking inward for what you're about with food and tell your story, right? That yeah. guy's got so much talent and so much exposure. I don't think he's narrowed it down to what he really loves yet. Yeah. He's a young cook. You know, I think he'll figure it out in – you know, having someone of your caliber tell him that was just, I mean, you floored him. It was awesome. <laughs> well, that's, that's super nice of you to say. And, Carrie, by the way, I just want to say how proud I am of you. I didn't get to tell you that in person yet, but it's so awesome for Colorado. And and, oh. uh, and and selfishly, I'm just excited to get to know you on the show because I don't know how else I'm going to get into Bordeaux. <laughs> that's, that's right. And and, and to, to speak on that point, Keegan, uh, the viewing parties at Bardot on Thursday nights are off the hook. It's so much fun. And Carrie's out there just uh, shaking hands and kissing babies, just doing the whole nine yards. But I want to ask you this, Carrie. Hindsight's twenty twenty, And I think that, um, you know, when, when you go through these competitions, is there ever a time that you say, after it's over and you hear the feedback that you would have reworked what you've done? Absolutely. Um, you know, hindsight, you learn so much. And, you know, and unfortunately, this challenge, I was in the middle, so I didn't get much feedback. Just the instant when the judges are at your table. Um, but for me, like, thinking about it and watching the episode on Thursday, like, I should have taken it a little bit more seriously and made, like, a classic German, you know, and just, like, throw some super you know, super classic, super tasty German food. And we learned, we spent the whole day learning about German food. And, you know, and I just kind of invented this fun little playful dish where I think I could have, you know, kind of honed it in a little bit more. So if I could do it again, I definitely would. Yeah. And and those competitions, and I, I would assume that as they go on, that you're learning more about the judges, what they're looking for, how you need to sharpen your skills. But confidence, if you get rattled there, one week to where you just get destroyed and, and they pick you apart. Does that confidence, uh, what do you do going into the next competition to shake that? Is it like an athlete? Oh, man, it's it's a mind game for sure. Like, all of a sudden, like, all your flaws are super exposed and you see them and you know that they're filming it. You, it's really easy to get in your own head. But, you know, you try to, like, talk to your friends and talk yourself out of it and it's a new day and get a good night's sleep, so... 
yeah. tough. Well, I mean, you got to give yourself more credit because I think on that episode you were very, very smart. What I really thought, I don't know you that well, but I just felt like you were you, which I appreciated because I thought the Hasselhoff stuff was hilarious. <laughs> and I think that probably Colicchio is the only person on planet Earth that doesn't think that's funny. And uh, <laughs> I think everybody else thinks it's amazing. And certainly he is this odd idol of Germany. So I think I think you brought it. It was hilarious. You know, Keegan, I live I live tweet during the show, and when Ke- yeah. when Carrie said that, I put out a, a a meme of David Hasselhoff when he was drunk on the floor eating food. I saw that. That was so funny. <laughs> it was so it's so great what you did. You got a bunch of headlines. You got the best laugh. Totally. And you weren't in the yes. top or the bottom, which means yeah. you're on the show. All right, do this, Keegan. Yeah. Um, Advice. Uh, what would be advice for anybody that's in a competition? You can't give it to Carrie now because the the season's over. But w- what do you do for chefs like that that are competing and and people oh, judging their food? Well, listen. You know, I'll say something that you hear them say on Top Chef, so it's not that original. But I believe it after you know two hundred plus episodes of Challenge. You have to know your own voice as a cook, and you have to not yeah. be afraid to bring it. And uh, and then. You know, you have to be true to yourself because um, the unknown is going to happen. So you got to go into competition understanding that, that 60% max is going to go the way you want and 40 or 50% is going to be a complete unknown. Mm. So you got to go with yeah. some reliable things, and that just means knowing yourself as a cook. And competition is good for chefs because it makes them focus on who they are. And it, like she said, it shines a spotlight on what you're good at and what you're not good at. There's no hiding in a show like that. And uh, so I would just say, first of all, don't be afraid. And maybe my other biggest thing, know your judges. That's really, really important. Yeah, and the competition itself. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, listen, if they, if they beat you, they beat you. Do your best. If they beat you, they beat you. But, you know, it's a, it's a, that's why Top Chef's tough. How are you going to make me, Pad, by Colicchio and Graham all happy with the same dish? That's a tough call. Yeah. Carrie, did you know I brother think- was going home this week? Uh, like in or, real no, time? Or yeah, today? well, no. Did you know? Like, did you, do you know ahead of time what each episode would be? Like, what what episode seven will be? Or did you know episode six would be the one brother was exiting? Or is it? How does that um, work? Yeah, we filmed it in succession. You know, so each week, you know, brothers out this week. You know, and then so now we're down to what ten? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So they're they're in order. Very yeah, they're cool. all in order, and they're all standing there w- during the elimination. I mean, yeah. at least yeah. the three are, and then they go back and talk about it. How many weeks are there, Carrie? So it's I think 16? there were fifteen contestants, so yeah. it must go fifteen or yeah. sixteen or fourteen weeks or something. I bet you do great on week sixteen or fifteen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always, <laughs> Carrie, hey, thanks so much. We love checking in with you Thursday nights. Um, Bardo, where is it? Oh, she's, oh. She's, she's, well, <laughs> yeah. They're it like, is, don't ask me that again. They, they, they might have called her back on the line. They're like, shut up. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Last week, she, so we had um, Juan Padro in studio last week while Carrie was on. And it, she made a sudden exit as well. And he was like, yeah, she better get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, Keegan, we're going to put you on hold. Come back. We're behind on a break. We're going to talk uh, uh, about you, Keegan Gerhardt, next, all the things that you're up to. We love catching up with you, and we thank you so much for being on the show. So we'll take that break. We'll be right back. Keegan Gerhardt from D-Bar Denver, just a great chef, and uh, from from Food Network fame, I, I would want to say. But we know him personally. We just love the guy. All right, we'll come back. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman from Growers Organic, and it's really cool to have these guys on the show. So we'll be back in a flash. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio.